It's a remote village in the middle of the rainforest in the Northern Democratic Republic of Congo. Amid the mud houses, this small church, Saint Emile, a Slovenian priest officiated here from 1992 to 2001, his name Father Joseph, known as Jose by locals. Pia Bubola remembers him well. The house over there is Mr. Jose's house. Pierre was 14 years old and one of his altar boys. In the evening after mass, Father Joseph would often invite him into his house. He would call me in. He would hold my hand, open the fly of his trousers and take out his penis. He would start touching himself, masturbating, and when he was about to ejaculate, he would tell me to hold out my hands. He would do that there, on the veranda. According to several alleged victims, Father Joseph sexually abused dozens of young men, all of the minors at the time in Motto. Some also accuse him of rape. Jean-Denis was only 16. He would bribe us with small sums of money so that we would not say anything. He would give us clothes, sometimes soap. He also paid for my studies. He gave me money to go to school. Like Jean-Denis, dozens of young boys in the village would get money from Father Joseph to study in the neighboring towns of Bandaka in Bikoro. In Moto, many elders held the priest's generosity but knew nothing about the abuse. He would give the altar boys money to go to school. And the boys would help him during mass and walk around the village with him. I only found out what happened after the boys started talking. Before that, I had seen nothing. In 2001, two alleged victims reported Father Joseph to the judicial police. The priest was charged with paedophilia, indecent assault and endangering state security. When questioned, he denied the accusations. But here's what the police officer concluded. The allegations against Father José are founded in so far as he has special relationships with these young people outside the community. Father Joseph never stood trial in the DRC. According to this former priest, the congregation of the mission in charge of the Motto Parish had him returned to Europe as soon as possible. The provincial asked me if I could go to Muto to meet Father Jose so that I would pick him up at 3 a.m. and take him to Babanda. He didn't stick around, not even in Kinshasa. He was evacuated quickly. Asked about Father Joseph, the congregation of the mission said he was never a member of the order and denied any link with the priest. The father of one of the alleged victims asked to reopen the case in 2021. At his request, the Congolese Judicial Police interviewed several alleged victims and their relatives. It concluded once again that Father Joseph should be brought before a judge. 20 years on, Claudine demands justice for her brother, who died in 2014. We made this statement in 2021 because so far nobody has helped us. The priest is far away, so it's been complicated to initiate proceedings from here. In my testimony, I asked the government to do something. We've lost our brother. Last year, 11 alleged victims also turned to Irish NGO Coping International to help them seek justice. The organisation passed on their testimonies as well as those of witnesses and relatives of deceased victims to the Vatican. The Archdiocese of Bandaka declined our request for an interview but sent us a statement in August. It reveals that an investigation was carried out by the Archdiocese under the supervision of the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, the Vatican office that processes clergy sex abuse cases around the world. At the conclusion of the investigation and after reviewing all the evidence, it has been considered that there are no elements that imply the guilt of the accused. We were unable to find any more information on the investigation. The Archdiocese of Bandaka, the Nunciature in Kinshasa, and the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith did not respond to our request for details. But several alleged victims, some of whom had written to the Vatican, told us they were not contacted by the church. Michel is one of them. He preferred not to give his full name. I was expecting that, as it happened, people would approach us. 
Because we were first-hand witnesses, but nobody did. People who say that this man is innocent, I would like to confront them. I'm ready. Vincent Doyle of Coping International believes this case shows that the church is not yet ready to make itself accountable for clergy abuse. The fact that not all victims were interviewed is is a reflective of how sexual abuse of minors and other types of abuse has been handled across the world. Not all countries, uh, particularly developing countries, have not engaged in any implementation of safeguarding standards. Earlier this year, a Slovenian journalist, Novike Mihailovic, tracked down Father Joseph. In an article published on the front page of Delo, he revealed that a civil case was filed by the church in Slovenia, but that the proceedings were dropped because the statute of limitations had expired. Father Joseph now works in the parish of Slivnica in his home country. He refused to answer our questions. Photos posted on his Facebook account and the parish's social networks show him posing with children. Meanwhile, the Maribor Archdiocese to which he belongs says it stands by the results of the Congolese investigation.